what is platform engineering? This is actually a trend that we're starting to see in the world publicly on Twitter, but it has been a trend inside very large organizations for probably going on at least seven years, maybe a bit more. But what platform engineering really is, it's at its minimum as another rename for what we've had for decades, you know, ops, then you know, systems engineers, and then DevOps and SREs and things of that nature. But in reality, what is happening inside larger organizations is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to decouple people who build applications from the people who run the infrastructure. And you know, this platform engineering is another mechanism by which we can abstract some of those things away. Do I think this is a real trend? Absolutely. I think this is a real trend. Most of the large organizations out there already have some form of platform engineering, and it is not ultimately the exact same flavor of DevOps or SRE, there's a slight nuance to it. Do I think it will ultimately subsume all of DevOps and SRE? No, I don't think that'll be the case, but I think that the, particularly in the larger, more sophisticated organizations that have a lot more complex requirements than a five person, even to a 50 person startup, that you'll have platform and platform engineering inside these organizations. Can big companies innovate? Well, of course, yes, is the answer. Yes, big companies can innovate. I think the real interesting question in this though is, why don't big companies tend to innovate? And I'm gonna pick on a company here, and it's a former company of mine in Salesforce. If you look at Salesforce, in reality, over the last, what, 10 years probably, it hasn't released anything of interest in the core unit of the business, the actual Salesforce business. And yes, somebody listening to this is gonna argue, we released X feature or Y thing, but appreciably for the business, it hasn't meaningfully released anything. What it has done is it's acquired interesting business into it. It's acquired Tableau, Heroku, MuleSoft, Slack. It's acquired expansion. It's acquired revenue and it's acquired its way into the continued stock growth. Why can't Salesforce innovate in and of itself outside of acquiring things? I think that's kind of the nature of what happens when companies get really large. As they transition from their own startup to kind of an established company to this basically mega corporation, I tend to think about them as less tech companies and more private equity or PE holding companies. And their job is the stock price. And the easiest mechanism for that is their balance sheet. They have massive dollars on their balance sheet and they're gonna use that to acquire other more innovative in the moment in the sector companies and pull them in and then eke that out. Microsoft and Salesforce are two of the best examples of this over the past 10 to 20 years. And if you think about what Microsoft and Salesforce do incredibly well, is they have some of the, if not the best sales teams in the world. And I think Microsoft probably has the best sales team in the entire world, maybe second by Salesforce. So do what they do well, they sell. Do what you don't do well, which is innovate, go buy that, bring it into the portfolio, price package it, wrap it all together, and then go sell it. Can I add PLG later? And should PLG report to the head of sales? I'm gonna go and answer top down and bottom up distribution mechanisms in another video. For today, what I wanna talk about is the actual question here, which leads me to believe that one, I think this PLG term is useful, but it overcomplicates the situation. To simplify this as much as possible, let's just say that you basically have two different distribution mechanisms. One is a bottom up and one is a top down. And it's very simple what bottom up means. Bottom up means that a customer can come to your product, whether it be a website or a download distribution of something or other in the app store or whatever, and literally never has to talk to anybody at your company. They can download it, they can create an account and use it online for free, and then maybe they can use a credit card to convert. Bottom up, very simple very straightforward. Top down means that there's a touch involved by your company. And we typically say that it's top down because it's going top down at your business to their business to sell it. And I wanna really simplify this whole thing with PLG. It should not be complicated. Can a user come to your website, create an account and use your product and never talk to somebody at your company? Then can they put a credit card in place and start giving you money? That's as simple a way to start thinking about this. If you can do that, you've got that distribution mechanism. If you can't, you don't.